Good morning and welcome to St. James on this first Sunday after Christmas. I'm Becky Jones, the rector, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning. After the raucousness of Christmas Eve and the quiet stillness of Christmas morning, our worship of our newborn King continues today with John's account of the cosmic Christ, the Word made flesh, who has been there since the beginning of time. Now won't you join me in a moment of prayerful silence as we prepare for worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem 
in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the psalm for today, read responsively by half verse. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the numbers of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of the woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you know, are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law, indeed, was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy Spirit, come, be in this place, and in all the places where we are gathered this morning. Give life to my words. Touch each of our hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently came across some of the most amazing photos created by an amazing artist. Lu Bolin lives in Beijing, but his work has taken him all over the world. He's known as the Invisible Man, and if you look at the photos in his series that he calls Hiding in the City, you can clearly see why. Bolin literally paints himself into a scene. I don't mean like some artists who paint their own likenesses into a portrait of something else. I mean Bolin takes a picture of a location, then goes back to his studio and paints a tight-fitting suit to look exactly like one spot within the photo he has taken. Then, wearing that painted suit, he goes back and stands in the spot that he's now painted himself to look like. And then he'll stand absolutely still for hours so his assistants can finish painting him, skin, hair, and all, totally into the picture. He blends in so perfectly, sometimes it's hard to find him. Let me show you some photos here. Here he is, blending right into the Colosseum. You see his feet? And here, he has become just part of the rubble. Can you see him in here, reclining on this pile of bricks? He's virtually invisible in this one, but there he is, if you look carefully, right in the center. He says his intention is not to disappear into the environment, but rather to let the environment take possession of him. He says his art is a way of calling attention to social and political issues and how over time we can become oblivious to seeing or caring about the injustices 
all around us and the people trapped inside them. And it's a reminder, too, of how easy it is for us to become part of the problem. I thought about Bolin as I read the words of our gospel lesson and how the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It seems that God, too, decided to paint himself into our lives. It's as if Jesus jumped right onto the canvas and got into the mess with us. For a time, God was right there, hiding in the city, looking just like everyone else. God blended in perfectly to the world he had created. Today, Jesus no longer dwells among us in the flesh, but if you look carefully, you can still see the outlines of Christ reflected in our world. Just as with Bolin, you have to look, but there, that little ridge right there, and there, that shade is just a bit off, and there, that's a face. It would have been so easy to overlook, but once we train ourselves, we begin to see the outlines more clearly. We begin to see the telltale signs that the master is still painting himself right into his masterpiece. Bit of love there in a place where you wouldn't expect to find it. Bit of compassion in an otherwise unremitting sea of coldness. An unexpectedly changed heart a surprising development, a touch of the majestic suddenly coming into focus, like the mountains as you travel west out of Denver on I-70, suddenly framed by a bridge. A piece of music that somehow breaks through our conscious guard and speaks to our soul at the deepest level, bringing us to tears because of its beauty, a memory that comes leaping up to our consciousness, bringing a smile and a warm feeling. That is the word made flesh, still dwelling among us. And we only get glimpses of it for a brief moment, and then it's gone from sight, once more blending into the background of our day-to-day -day lives. But it's there. We've seen it. Now, before faith came, the Apostle Paul says, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. There's something about catching that glimpse of the word made flesh that frees us. There's something about those glimpses of the divine that is so good for us, good for our soul. It somehow makes us want to keep looking to see just how many places we can find God, not hiding, but waiting, waiting for us to look there, waiting for us to at last see what has been there all along, right there in the midst of injustice, in the midst of pain, in the midst of violence, in the midst of pandemic. God really is there all along experiencing everything we experience, seeing everything we see, feeling everything we feel, and then somehow transforming it. It's almost as if God were preparing a tight-fitting suit, a suit just for us, a suit that would help us to blend into the picture that God has in mind. Isaiah spoke of it. Isaiah, that great prophet who saw glimpses of things so miraculous, so numinous, he could never hope to describe them exactly. So he left us metaphor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, Isaiah said. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. There, that's the real masterpiece God is working on. 
God is painting himself into our world so that our world can be transformed bit by bit, stroke by stroke, into God's own vision. And God is painting us to live into that vision. John the Evangelist says, No one has ever seen God, that it is only the Son who has made God known. But I think that if we train our eyes to look, we begin to see the outline of God all over our world. The Word made flesh still dwells among us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith as found in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Christ, we are overwhelmed with your presence, humble yet divine. Our hearts are filled with longing for the day when all people will see your glory, when none of your people will know hunger, loneliness, or fear, when each of us will know the peace of your presence. I invite you now to pray for all whom God has made. Our hope is for peace for all nations and leaders who desire, whose desire is for justice and equality. I invite you to pray for the peace of the world. Our yearning is for wholesomeness, for those who ache, whose lives are shattered, whose hope is lost. I invite you to pray for those who suffer and for the end of their suffering. Our hope is for those who have died and entered that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. I invite you to pray for those who have died. Today we pray for especially for Ashley, Bev, Becky, Jan, Megan, Robbie, 
Donna, Dale, Edsel, Linnell, Shirley, Susan, Jordan and Molly, Matt and Jenny, and Tom and Linda. We pray also for those who are homebound, including Donna, Janice, Lenore, Betty, Maggie, Arlene, Hank and Olga, and Pat. And I invite you to name those others for whom you pray, either aloud or silently in your heart. Our deepest prayer is that we may learn and grow in your love and bear witness to the world that God is with us. I pray that the one who has given us these desires gives us also the grace and power to work toward their fulfillment. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Wali. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Any the peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Wally. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth, and earth to heaven, grant you peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
You have heard God's story, the story of God's own son. May God fill you with joy to bring this good news to others today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.